right guys, so funny story. We showed up here to kind of like the entrance to Yosemite where you got to pay the fee to enter the park. Um, and they let us know that because it is first snow that we were required to have chains on our vehicle. So long story short, the lady at the gate turned us away saying that it was unsafe for us to drive. We didn't have like mud and snow tires and we didn't have chains. We spent the last three hours driving for nothing. Uh, but luckily on the way back, I saw a gas station pulled into it had this gut feeling that they carried chains next thing you know they had chains so here we are we're about to go explore Yosemite I've never put chains on before <laughs> first time for everything right Let's go. You guys want to know what the best part is? We pulled up now, and they said we didn't even need these anymore. <laughs> All right, anyways. Go between these red cars. All right, dog, let me in. Alright you guys, so today we are in Yosemite and I'm going to be shooting with the Konica Big Mini. This is a camera that I recently picked up and we're just going to go around, try to make some photographs uh, and overall just enjoy being out here because last time I was here I was lugging around a 6.7 and it wasn't the most enjoyable thing. So Konica Big Mini, uh, we're going to go down to the valley now and make some more photographs. I'm in the, you're in the video. Do you want to be in the video? Hey, bud. Let's <laughs> talk. Alright guys, so the Konica Big Mini actually has a 35mm 3.5 lens. 
And if you ask me, is that wide enough for something as grand as Yosemite? Uh, honestly, probably not. I would shoot for something like a 24, maybe even a 28 millimeter. That's just probably what I would photograph Yosemite with. But with that said, man, today I wanted to come to Yosemite because one, I wanted to test out the big mini, you know, see what it was made of, see how the images look, how sharp the lens is, of course, and whatnot. But secondly, I wanted to get back just to nature, you know, kind of get away from the city a little bit, just kind of stroll around and explore an adventure. I think that's something that anybody who lives in a major city, like somewhere like San Francisco, it's good to kind of just, you know, detox away from that. We get so lost in kind of the hustle and bustle and fast paced city movement that we forget sometimes to just breathe and take in a view. So if you guys ever feel like that, man, come out to Yosemite, guarantee you, you will enjoy it. And always remember to pack light. Last time I brought my 6.7, Way too heavy this thing right here though it is it's honestly a blessing man so i'm gonna make some more photographs here uh we have a couple of other spots too that i want to check out today um and just make more photographs man simple that's what this video is about then at the end of this we'll talk about the big mini So we're walking away from this little meadow here overlooking, uh, I don't even know what mountain this is right here, but just check this man out. Incredible view. I guarantee you anywhere you go in Yosemite, no matter where you stand, there's going to be some type of beautiful view to have to be had. So here's one of them right here. Just absolutely insane. I'm gonna take a photograph real quick. Maybe we get a little bit closer. All right, so there's this one spot that I always come back to in Yosemite, and it's called the Sentinel Sentinel Bridge, um, and I'm going to show you guys why. All right, so you walk down this little road here past the stop sign. And here is the bridge right here. And also real quick, just to look backwards, gorgeous view again. It's, it's insane how large these mountains are, but we got to cross safely across this road. Here we go, folks. So there's one view, kind of like this beautiful scene here. Nice, calm water, maybe do some long exposure. Um, the sun kind of hitting the mountain there. This is what I came here for though. Right on the other side you have Half Dome, smack dead center. You got the nice reflection in the water here. Kind of subframed by all of these trees so we're gonna get a quick little photo of that. Check it out, you got a little fish in there.
All right, so there goes end of roll number one. We got two more rolls to shoot, uh, but we're gonna go on the move really quick to our next spot. And we're just gonna load up some more film and keep on shooting. I'm making some coffee real quick. Alright, if you've never heard of this stuff before, <laughs> I'm, I won't be surprised, but <laughs> typically you can get these like one mix coffees from the Philippines. Um, they also sell them like Asian markets, but this one is from a brand called Copico. And it's simple, man. You just take the whole packet and some hot water, empty out that packet has a nice smell to it and you stir it up that's it it's a freaking bird watching me what's up dog damn that's a big crow <laughs> he's huge all right just to show you guys this is what it looks like not the greatest man it's hella good just how i remember it <laughs> Finish the first roll, about to load up another one. So we got some clouds kind of coming in. Um, we're still coming over Al Capitan here. But for the most part, the rest of the kind of scenery here is still nicely lit. So switching over to Kodak Gold, capture some warmer tones. Let's go. Kind of thicker into the woods here. There's a little spot that I kind of scoped out as we were kind of driving to this meadow um, that I feel like would make a good photo. There she is, folks, El Capitan. Whew. So a lot of what we're doing is kind of just peeking through the trees, you know. Obviously, we're not at a high enough vantage point to capture some of those very unique angles that some people get. Um, and so, you know, Kind of from the ground, just looking up, it's insane how tall everything is around you. I mean, I'm gonna give you guys a quick little 360 view here. Starting from that way, you come around. I mean, it's just gorgeous right now. Also, the sun is starting to head over and some clouds are coming over, like I was saying. But, I still think we're gonna be able to make a couple of images here. So I'm gonna set you guys up. Hopefully Kodak Gold will come through, give us some nice warm tones. Let me set you guys up here. So a lot of times when I feel like I am lacking creatively, uh, something that I'll do to limit myself from just moving on too fast from a certain scene is plant my body in just one location and then just take five photos from that particular point in all different directions. And the idea is to force you, uh, you know, just to use that one spot to create five unique images. And luckily in Yosemite, it's just super easy again, like I said, with any angle that you look up with, there's always something to capture out here. All right guys, so the sun is now starting to peek through. 
shining some light here on the top of El Capitan. So I'm gonna set up shop here for a second. Just look at that, man. That is gorgeous. Here we go. So it's a couple weeks later, I just woke up, but I'm editing the video right now and I completely forgot to kind of like film an outro segment and also just talk about the big mini itself. And so in the next couple of weeks, I want to do a full review on the camera, kind of dive deeper into what I like about it, what I don't like. But for now, I'm going to give you guys a quick little overview of kind of just like my first impressions of shooting with this little mighty camera. So the big mini is actually really small um, compared to a lot of other point and shoots i really like the form factor just because of how boxy it looks um, a lot of other point and shoots that i own like for example all right so here's the olympus xa right here next to the big mini uh, the xa is still slightly smaller but i'm a fan of these boxier shapes and so uh, that's one big plus of the big mini it just has this nice kind of classic look to it also Someone commented that I need to get kind of that back screen. I don't know what it is. It's like a little film thing inside of there fixed. If any of you guys know how to get that done, definitely let me know because it's already kind of given out there. Now, as you guys saw out there, we were shooting with Fuji Superior 800 as well as Kodak Gold. The big mini, surprisingly, you know, for a point and shoot that does everything for you with no, you know, real adjustments. Um, I think it exposed the, the scenes pretty well. It was really contrasty out there, um, semi-cloudy over the valley, and so a lot of the time uh, there was changing conditions. There was super you know bright highlights up on the mountaintops, and then sometimes just really dark shadows on the ground. And so the Big Mini itself, man, compared to a lot of the other point and shoots that have just like a fully automated mode, in my opinion, has a really good meter. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but let me see here. There you go. It has these like brown buttons sometimes i don't know if it's just my copy or if it's just the way this camera is set to um, when you press the shutter it's not going to take a photograph you have to kind of like lock in with the light the corresponding light inside of there so uh, there's a little red light on the side let's see if i can get that in the frame there uh, and it'll only fire when it turns green and that might be for the autofocus or it might be for the exposure but a lot of the times i was pressing the shutter and nothing was happening so i'm guessing it may be you know an exposure thing but again like i said this is a very new camera to me and uh, i still need to learn kind of the ins and outs of it but overall, my first impressions of the Big Mini has been pretty good. I think, you know, it's a camera that I want to keep with me for a long time, just like the XA. It's small, it's pocketable, it can 
you know, make photographs on command for the most part. It also has a decently sharp 35 millimeter 3.5 lens. It's still really sharp for, you know, a small point and shoot like this. I say it's up there with like the Olympus Infinity Stylus, if you guys know what I'm talking about. But that pretty much wraps up my first impressions, you guys. Again, I want to do a more full in-depth review of this camera when I can learn more about it. Um, but that's just all I know right now. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And thank you, man for tagging along with me to Yosemite. I think next time when I go back to Yosemite, I wanna to try to go with uh, Trev Lee. If you guys don't know who that guy is, he is uh, from the Darkroom Lab and Trev uh, actually lived in Yosemite for a while. And so and so pretty much he would know all the dope spots to hike up. You know, I have no real knowledge on Yosemite, but thank you guys again, man, for tuning in. We have a ton of new videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I hope you guys can tune into them, man. So I'll see you in the next one as always. Middle to game. <laughs>